y'all already all know about um, overweight and gaining weight and um, different things nutritionally and health-wise that our um, community as well as our nation um, and our world is now getting to the point. So you've probably heard reports of England and Italy and whatnot even reporting um, American isms that are occurring globally. So they affect us fashion-wise and we affect them food-wise. So, um, so anyway, come on in. So I'll just turn. Um, yeah, we sure did. Um, so 65% of U.S. adults are overweight or obese, um, and usually that um, obese is considered 95% of your BMI, so you're in the 95th percentile. 50th percentile is the average, 95th is at the very top. So that's what obese is considered. Overweight, you could go with BMI, or um, you can do a couple other factors in terms of, of um, fat percentage and things like that. So people use different things. And um, our trainers are trained to do both of them, so they can explain this. Um, I also come from a background of um, nutrition in pediatrics, where I worked at Texas Children's for three years. So I got to see the other side of it, that 15% of children or adolescents are overweight or obese. And we just finished a study at Texas Children's of every um, kid admitted to the hospital, um, how overweight they were. And it was 15% probably it says 2005 but this is uh, three years ago now it's 30 percent so one third of every kid that came into our hospital doors are considered overweight so um, of course that may have they also have comorbidities or other factors that may cause them to be sick and things like that um, it accounts for a hundred billion dollars in healthcare costs what could we spend this money on could we spend it on something else <laughs> so um, if you take a portion of that is anyone paying for medicine right now? You guys, okay, yeah, I, a lot of us are. Um, putting that money into, and of course there's a lot of different things that we can pay for uh, medicine for, but health-related concerns, um, a lot of that preventatively um, can be controlled with some nutrition and um, also with our, our training expertise. So um, healthcare costs, that's a lot. That's an awful lot, and it's going to keep going up. And the more they figure out that we're doing real well making money on that, guess what's going to happen? They're going to keep going up. So, who pays taxes? Okay, okay. Just wondering if it would apply to anybody. <laughs> That's great. Come on in. Um, this leads to nearly uh, 300,000 American deaths yearly. So, this is overweight or obesity. It could also have a, another factor of heart disease or cancer but they will factor out what part of the cancer or heart disease that nutrition is related to. Um, also, it can, lead, it can cause uh, about 70% of cardiovascular heart disease. Does anybody have heart disease in their family that runs in their family? Okay, um, and the older we get, the more people that have heart disease, the more people it will affect. So it's kind of exponential, kind of goes out like this. Um, and it's doubled in only 20 years, in only 20 years. So um, lifespan predictions, it was, it was kind of scary. I don't want to scare anybody. I, I guess it was in um, about 2050 that they said the lifespan is going to be cut by about 10 years. 10 years. So um, that's scary. So this is a great time um, to, to jump on the bandwagon. Whether you're, you're 10 or you're 70, this is a great time to get started. So, um, so these are trends. Can you see this? Sorry. Um, in the 60s, we're about 13%. This is adults and this is children. So the adults are going up. What happens with the kids as the adults go up? It goes up with it. Why, why are the kids going up with it? Because adults are feeding the kids. So we're responsible for the kids. How many people have children living with them at home now? Okay, great. Great, which is why I see the deer in headlights look. I know who has <laughs> the kids in their house. <laughs> um, so this is this is what it is. It's a multifactorial event. So health is a multifactorial event, um, which is why it's good that somebody's in learning this stuff so you can practice it. And that's what this whole seminar is about. Is how, what do I do? Um, hey, has a definition yeah. of obesity change from No, it's all it hasn't, which is nice because then you can compare apples and apples, apples and apples. Of course, the dietitian has to say that. Um, but but you really you really do compare those two because the the definition has not changed. It's still that percent and the same BMI cutoffs. same cutoffs and that's why they go with BMI because it's a weight for height measure versus a uh, MetLife has a um, different scales that they do the standards. If you're this height and you're this age, you should be here. 
those will change, which is insurance, but in terms of health studies and stats and health and fitness, BMI, that's a standard measure. So is it the best standard? I'm not gonna answer that here. <laughs> so here's men's fitness. This is where we ranked. Okay, so um, this is the top 25 fattest cities. Sorry, is this okay? Top 25 fattest cities. And um, Detroit, why, was, why do you guys think Detroit was number one for my Midwestern people? Cold weather, what we they need up there. Walk. They don't walk. What is the, the, the town in Detroit known for? They do drive it over because it's freezing. It's a factory town. Factory town. So if you're working around the clock in a factory town, what's going to be a problem in terms of food? It's everywhere. Um, and especially in a big factory town where you got five minutes. You're on the clock. You got five minutes. Um, so Houston, here we, here we go. This is the fun part. Texas, 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 Texas. Kind of scary. So we moved to the, um, 2005, we got number one. You guys were the gold medalist. So um, congratulations, I think, to us. Um, but once this happened, um, Mayor Bill White, who I'm an incredibly large fan of, he said we will not be on the top 10 list and top 25 list in five years. And he made it increments. And he said we're not going to do this. Um, this is based on a lot of different things. Walking trails, the amount of walking trails per capita, amount of restaurants per uh, square mile, um, eating establishment, um, massive transit, which we're not really competent in. Um, but we're getting there. So these things are changing. So we, um, and I was actually on the Mayor's Wellness Council Committee uh, for 2006 to help pull Houston off. And this year, the rankings are not out yet, but I know that we're uh, number four. We're going to be number four. So we came down, and our goal in the next two years is to be to, to number 10. So adding walking trails, adding different things, parks and rec, and um, changing things in grocery stores um, is, is a huge deal. So it is working, you guys. So stay stay at it. Way pause, to go. Pause. Okay. Yeah. Uh-oh. We're dealing with statistics here. Okay. We can we can move down to number four because either A, we actually improved, or B, we sat still and everybody else just got fat. Good point. <laughs> Good point. So, uh, so despite all these facts about where we are one through ten, what is actually happening? I mean, how, how will we determine this? Is it somebody go around with a yardstick and start measuring people? No, they don't. No, they don't. They actually don't. Um, it's based on report. It's based on report. So um, there may be a lot of um, mal-reporting because people don't want to report that they do this or that or the other. Um, it's also numbers in terms of purchasing money for fast food establishments. So even if we don't know the waistline of everybody, we know the trends and we can measure trends in restaurants and grocery stores, which is a predictor of here. There's also another t top 25 list, which is the top 25 fittest cities in the US. Um, and that is our ultimate goal and fittest cities um, are done by um, physician um, measurements in terms of how quickly their um, patients can come off of meds. So there, it, there's there's no way to measure everybody. And I don't know who wants that job. No, you and I can do that together, and then we will have a, a good report. Um, and that's a difficult measure. So you're absolutely right if you're a statistician that, that those numbers are a little tough. But um, our goal is to move to the fittest city list, which is um, it's going to be tough. Do you guys know what cities are up there? What would you guess? Salt Lake City is up there. San Diego is. What did you say? Yeah. Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Because Lifetime Fitness started there. That's why I went there. Um, 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 there's one city in Texas. Austin. Austin. So they're on the fittest city list. Um, so anyway, what's tipping the scale? Why? Why is this happening? What's going on? Ideas. I need your help in this area because I don't know. Why are we so bad? Why are why? Yeah, <laughs> well, it's because um, you know I've lived overseas and well, we walk everywhere. Okay, okay. overseas we use Fresh transit. Yeah, everyone walks. It's a healthy lifestyle. They buy bread, fresh fruits and vegetables every day. Okay, they eat real food. We eat trash. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have another dietitian friend, and she tries to counsel women with young children. and says, make a sandwich, and they say that's not right. They look good right mm -hmm. three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sure, sure. Portions, great. Portions, okay, oh, portions, portions are bigger. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's another one. What else? People just don't want to take the time to go to the store. And there's so many simple things that can be done. I mean, I have a son at UT who's 19, and he would not eat if McDonald's was his only choice. Right. I mean, he, he went through athletics in high school, and yeah. he's still in martial arts. And so he takes time. It's simple eating, but it's healthy. Yeah, that's so, true. That's true. I mean, anybody can do it. Right. That's true. It's easier not to eat healthy. It really is. Especially, um, Houston is a fast, not like New York, but it's a fast city. We've got all the oil industry here. We've got a lot of finance. We've got a lot of headquarters. So the more you do that, the less time that you have to do stuff. So um, so that's another one. What else? Yeah, very good restaurants. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. What a state. The salt grass. We didn't have that in Indiana because you just cut the cow in the backyard and slap it on the ground in the front. <laughs> so we didn't have salt grass. So good stuff. Yeah. The beef house. Beef house. <laughs> and y'all's Mexican food is awesome. May I add? Yeah. So it's it's good. Um, but there's ways to kind of kind of work with that. So we got a lot of things. Good restaurants. Uh, what else? Around this town's the car. Sedentary life, same exact thing. Yeah, sedentary life. Um, we don't have um, good walking areas in Houston. That's one thing Mayor Bill, not Bill White that we recommended is start doing um, some things where there's bike lanes, there's better walking lanes, um, but with three skylines in the city, it's hard to be in the downtown area and walk around. So it is tough. And so Houston, that is tough for us, for sure. So you guys are good. And that's the end of the presentation because he answered all the questions. Um, okay, physical activity facts. More than 60% of adults do not achieve the recommended amount of physical activity. And what is that? What's the recommended amount? 30 minutes, uh, four or five times a week. 30 minutes? Four, 30 minutes, four or five times a week. Or is it three times a week instead of actually? Right. Actually, that's not really good. Okay, so three to four, maybe six. Other ideas? Our expert in here. It's every day. Um, 30 to 60 minutes for what is it? Weight maintenance and for weight loss, it's 90. Yeah. 90. But that's not what the general public believes. What you hear in the general public is 30 minutes three times a week. That's exactly right. But that also includes walking to my car, which is if it's crowded, lifetime, it's in the back, so that, you know, two minutes counts, things like that. So it's 90 minutes of just But two hours of, of housework doesn't mean two hours of continual cardio physical activity. Right, that's, that's why I'm asking what kind of activity are we talking about for night and day? That's right. Like, I mean, moving. Just like, moving. Yeah, and if you're trying to explain it. But basically, if, if you're out moving, you're doing things, you're active, that would count as a type of activity level. Yeah, they're not just, I think, an example of kind of sitting there and doing something. Like, like paying yeah. bills. Yeah, they, that would be. Or putting away the dishes, stuff like that, moving pile from one of the house to the other, which is how I think them. But <laughs> that wouldn't necessarily count. So you're not saying the uh, where you get your heart rate up to make the blood, you know, come off the, the no, absolutely. You want to do that. That's the intention. So if you're doing some housework like yard work, moving plants around, moving furniture around that your heart rate is up, is that, that is that reasonable? Yeah. Okay. Then that would be able to account for it in 90 minutes. So it's a lot more than what we think. 25% of adults are not active at all. 25%. So when we think that we're really active, the daily activities of life don't necessarily count. Brushing teeth, once again, rearranging my piles so it looks like I'm cleaning up, things like that. Unhealthy eating and lack of physical activity, too many causes of obesity are responsible for at least 300,000 preventable deaths each year. Preventable. Preventable. Absolutely preventable. Um, social support from family and friends has been consistently and positively related to regular physical activity. How how much more do y'all feel excited about coming into the gym when you have somebody with you or someone saying, "Go do that. Go do it. I'll be here when you get back." For sure. For sure. Yeah, sure. Come on in. 
Um, and it's nice, things like having daycare down here, the fact that somebody else is supporting you, bringing your kids, put them downstairs, so you do your workout, we'll be glad to watch after your kids. Having that kind of support, whether it's friends, family, um, or staff here at Lifetime, um, that, can, that helps, that helps get, th get, get things going. By the time the average person reaches the age 70 he or she will have spent seven to 10 solid straight years of watching television. This is based on an average. That includes football, so I think you can negate that from the seven to 10 years in my opinion. <laughs> okay, um, so this is number of hours per day of television, television viewing per household. Um, in the 50s, it was about 4.5, and now it's um, eight. Per day. That number's about to go up. There's Is a it study, really? Yeah, there's a study showing now that we spend 10 hours a day either computer, TV, television, or some type of thing. Average 10 hours a day per person now. 10 hours a day per person. Per person. It's about to come out. You'll see the study release here soon um, from the people that do all the different, whatever it's called, statistics. Um, they're about to announce this 10 hours a day. Wow. So that is, wow, we can add it on for so <laughs> I just found out last night. Oh, man. Thanks. 61% um, percent increase in daily TV viewing from the 50s till 2000, and 23% drop in PE class attendance. So this is for our kids. This is for our kids. They're getting them into the academic part. They're getting them into the classroom. Um, but you know what? If you're tired and lethargic and you don't have that exercise energy going, in my opinion, those extra class hour times are less effective because now we haven't burned off the steam um, that all parents like to be burned off. Um, but there's a drop in PE class. However, there's a new reinstated, it's called the, the Health Code, Health and Wellness Code for School Policy for 2006-2007. All of them had to submit a proposal to their um, parent association that they had to implement a physical activity program. So they have to include an hour and a half of physical activity per week so that three 30 minute classes, um, and that's by law, whether it's recess, uh, what am I saying, recess, I haven't had it so long, I don't know what it is, <laughs> recess, or um, it's implemented in PE class, they have to have it in place. Now, they don't have to actually put it into effect for another two years, but they have to have written in the codes now, which is great, it's good, it's moving. So, okay, I don't know if y'all can see this, this is U.S. per capita food consumption. The red is, is milk, the green is coffee, the one that, yeah, it's going down. Coffee's actually going down. Um, Starbucks. Does anybody work for Starbucks in here? Okay, this one is regular soft drink consumption. Here's diet soft drink consumption. So both of them are going up. Um, so, and then this is tea, and then fruit juice is the pink, and that's it. So, said, okay, so we think that, that Coke, drinking more, is the reason for weight gain. Well, that is a good point. It, it is. Now, diet consumption is also going up. So if they're going up proportionately, proportionately, then where's the, the disconnect? Because if we're having just as many people increase in this, we have just as many people increase in diet, but yet the, the weight gain is happening faster. So it can't be just, just that. It really can't. Um, what's coming down? Total milk and coffee. So I'm going to give you my thoughts about milk consumption. Um, and Purdue, where I went to school, is um, a leading expert in, in milk research because we have so many cows up there. Um, but it's one of um, that. There's a factor that uh, low-fat dairy products will play in weight loss, and I will explain that to you. But this kind of, I guess, food for thought. Um, so here's some reasons of tipping the scale: overeating. Did you or did you not say that I could have one more hamburger before going on my diet? <laughs> Nutritional misunderstanding. It's very important to have a balanced diet. So I've got 15 pounds of food compared to 16 pounds of food. It's balanced. So it's tough because there's a lot of uh, malinformation nutritionally out there. A million. I mean, you turn on the Today Show and there's a different diet. What's, what's right for you? What's going to work for you? And that is why my job is so tough because I have to stay on top of everything. And I also have to say for each person why something would or would not work for them. So, and that's why it's hard as a consumer of information if you're an educated group, which Cinco Ranch is very educated, um, and you are making that step to become educated, depends what the educational material is. There's some 
I could do a blog of educational material and create my own diet, and that's now out there. So it's very frustrating as consumers, I know. Um, there's no quick fix. Finally, a food label I can understand. Each serving contains 10 grams of fat and 5 grams of dough. Thin. <laughs> That's great. I love these guys. Um, less time, more choices. And you know, I've said that, that there's not a lot of time, and there's a million choices, and a lot of good food, and no time. And um, that is a true concern. The question is, this isn't going to go away, so what do we do? How do we deal with it? It's not going to go away. There will be fast food restaurants anywhere we go. So that's that's see what we can do with that. Increasing portion sizes. Okay, in 1955, when McDonald's first opened, 2.4 ounces, which is, a, okay, this is, if, if my fist is a cup, it's one third of my fist, is how many french fries you got in, in 55. Yeah, yeah, it's impressive. So now, the small, the kitty one, is um, about that size and the super size is um, 7.1 ounces so you can just kind of see how this is uh, 610 calories in this one this one has about 120. So, yeah there you go there you go coca-cola um, 6.5 fluid ounces was the very first um, soda drink which is uh, less than a cup half is about half of a cup um, and that's less than the child size now. Um, granted, this was real Coca-Cola syrup. I went to Atlanta, my sister used to live in Atlanta, and we went to the Coca-Cola factory, and they actually did the real stuff, they did the real syrup, so it, it was a, a little bit more exciting. Um, okay, super size. Okay, I went to buy this today, and I want, I want to let y'all know, I've carried this around the gym, and I've got, I probably am fired for carrying this around the club so many times. This is a 64 ouncer. Um, so super size isn't quite this big, but um, have y'all seen this in, in different restaurants? This is crazy. I can put my whole arm in here. Um, but 64 ounces. Okay, this 42 ouncer is uh, about 580 calories. This one would be about 700 calories. If you did 700 calories, add one of these every day for a whole week, you would gain about one and one third pounds just from this alone. Eating everything normally, but just this alone, just for a week. So it's, it's pretty impressive. Oh, you do? Yeah, let's see what you got. Yeah. Got some lunch for everybody in here. And Is that a normal? So is that one fruit for me? Like a 
one. It's one banana, right? Yeah. You guys are good. It, it's actually two servings. So that banana is two full servings. This peanut butter, um, Central Market or not, this is a this is a real banana. So if you get the large bananas, it's actually and that's part of the portion stuff. It actually counts as two. Um, can you guys see back here? One banana. And this is okay if this is what you get and take to school or work. But as long as you know that in the nutrition realm, this is the normal one, which is fine if you're doing this because it may it may make sense. But just so you know, this is the normal one. All right. What about the peanut butter? Is that about three tablespoons you can on there, Oh, yeah, probably seven. That's a pretty good All right, here's one, here's one tablespoon. Maybe it's a little more three. <laughs> this is one. And this is what a normal serving is, which is why they put it in a little packet, so you know. Um, does it mean anything bad if you do two or three? Not necessarily. Maybe and that's maybe what you need. But the key is knowing that, knowing okay, this is not normal. This is this is this is normal. Um, but having that portion distortion and at least knowing, and Jason may need this because he probably burned 1,200 calories this morning in his workout because he's he's that good. So he may actually need that peanut butter and that banana, and he probably, he probably does, and he'll probably need more. But the question is, do we all know that? Because all of our bodies are different. So if I see Jason eating this, I'm thinking, wow. He's a lean, fit guy. That's what I need to eat, too. Well, not, not necessarily. I'm not going to burn 1,200 calories. Um, and I, I know it, the, the portion sizes are a little different. Wow. So bread size. And the bread? Let's see. Do you guys see this, this bread on here? How is, how's that bread look? <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Um, Size-wise, is this pretty normal? And we can hold up that. Too. It's, it's, it's a little bit wider. What do you guys think? Normal? Yeah. Uh, don't feel bad if you say it. Well, you, you don't have any choice when you go to the store. You really don't have this a lot of choices. Part of the this is part of the market. There are some breads, and that's a great one. This is a normal size bread. The one that's more square that fits in the toaster, so you don't have to do this. <laughs> I know. I know the secret. I'm out there in the world. I don't live in my nutrition desk and office. So you don't have to go this way, but now the toasters, do you guys want to know something? They're wider. Yes. Yes. So this is just to get you guys aware of what's normal. I'm bringing normal back. What's one portion? One portion size when you say normal? One portion. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Let's see. What else you got in there, Jason? Some peanuts. Some peanuts. Wow. One serving of peanuts. Are they raw or not? They are roasted milk. Yeah. One. Right? One container? Uh, <laughs> one container. That's about right. If you can hold it in your palm without it going on to your fingers, so what you can hold in your palm without spilling. That's what I do. What if you got big hands? <laughs> then you're lucky. Then you're really more. I mean, you're. Yeah, you're, you're, you're then lucky. you're. Yeah. But that's normal. What you can hold on a flat hand without <laughs> bringing it in and curling it up, um, that, that's about what's normal. So these are things that you can eyeball and that you can look at, just like this. A fruit. You guys know those apples in Central Market? How big are some of those apples? <laughs> Show me. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And that's fine, because those apples are great. Plus you're paying $7 for one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's fine, but knowing the size of my fist, more or less, is about a cup, is about what one fruit should be. So if you get one of the big ones, then great, then you have had two fruits. So when they say, we recommend three or four fruits per day, that one apple, that counts as your two fruits. That counts as your two fruits. So that, even if it's a healthy food item, that still counts. Um, what else we got? A bagel. A bagel. I love bagels. 
I'm so glad you brought bagels, Jason. Yeah. I love bagels. That's not one serving. But it, is this a good one? We make fun of you guys. I thought everything we bring out is. You are all of our extras. Our samples are going to stay here. I know. I give you some good <laughs> what do you guys think? Is, that, is this a good one? Normal or big? Who says normal? I think that's big. Who says a little big? Who says really big? Okay, okay, so we got a combo. Um, let's find out. Let's see what Jason has. Can you comment on the nuts? The uh, raw and, you know, uh, versus roasted and Calorie wise, if you're talking weight gain, weight loss are about the same. There's some processing a little different if they're honey, they're honey roasted or added. Um, some will have sugar also on them, sugar coating, that will add. But if you have dry roasted versus non sugar, non added, raw, um, calorie wise, because the calories come from fat, it's a natural source of fat, it will be about the same calories. But some of these in the can, I mean, you, they say you have to be careful because I think, don't you think some of them have added? Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. So, some surely will. The wrong people totally different punch and Right. Yeah, because of the designs. Right. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. So, they do fine differently. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So if I eat straight candy, straight sugar, my body response is going to go like this, and then what's it going to do? Drop down, which is when the um, next point of my cabin. Um, but glycemic response is something that if you're diabetic, if you're working out, if you are a uh, living and breathing individual, you probably are concerned about because it's how you feel and it's how your, your, your body responds to sugar. So um, glycemic index for instant potatoes, things are the quick fix, um, go up so your, your blood sugar um, sends in insulin quicker and you drop quicker. So there's not a lasting effect, which is why they say refined starches. It, it's more of a kind of in the refined category because it gives the same response because it's a quick sugar, it's glucose, which is a monosaccharide mono because it's one, it comes into your bloodstream fast, faster, which is why it shoots up faster. Um, things that are um, instant potatoes. Instant potatoes. Right, baked potato is still pretty high, high response because it has the same type of glucose, which is the same kind of sugar. It's a quick response sugar. So it comes up and it probably peaks a little bit more, whereas instant goes, it goes straight down. It's like that. So um, if you're on a weight loss control, um, and this is just uh, a general, and if you're not comfortable, you don't have to raise your hand, but um, who is interested on a, um, in terms of any weight loss between one pound and how many ever pounds? Okay, who's interested in weight maintenance? Weight maintenance. Who's interested in weight gain? For muscle or whatnot. And there's a lot of people that, that do have weight gain because their goals are different. They want to be a different size and muscularly. Um, if you are on a weight control diet, one of the easiest ways, and we'll go over this in a little bit, um, one of the easiest ways to have moderate weight loss without being on a starvation diet is naturally reducing these high glycemic index foods. Because if you think about it, if I eat something, I come down, I want something to eat at this time. If I get something that goes like this, I don't, I'm not starving myself. I'm just going and getting another food that lasts a little bit longer, so I feel a little bit fuller. So I don't do starvation diets, and if I ever work with you, you will never do starvation diets, and it needs to be something functional, but um, things that come up and shoot down, I'll just shoot yourself sweet here. Potatoes don't, don't sweet potatoes are a little bit more because they have a little bit of different, like vitamin A and different things in there will help it, mm -hmm, fats in there will help it um, res respond a little bit more. So fats, proteins, fiber and stuff will help it stay a little bit normal. So hopefully that answers you. Know, where is the glycemic index? The carrot has a worse glycemic index than the Snickers bar. Um, so. it, it does, it does, but the sugar that, that is in it is a little different than a Snickers bar. So your body will respond in a different way, even though the test is based on a blood sugar response. So, so it will you absorb can higher fiber things with your baked potato or other high glycemic index. So you totally change the glycemic index on that. You do totally change the glycemic index of that. And that's something that we will talk about. I want to make sure for time's sake that we get to that point. So good, good questions. And stop me if you have some other questions. Pop quiz. If you drank one supersized um, Coke instead of the original so you're still drinking Coke. You still like your Coke. But you have super size is about, okay, so we'll say from the yellow up. Super size Coke instead of the regular, which is probably about this size if I made this into a cup. And so you're still having some Coke. Um, how much, if you did this every day for five months, I did this one instead of actually, a, it'd be a, a real cup, but this tall. Every day for five months, how much weight would you gain from the Coke alone? You're still eating the same thing. You're still working out the same. So that's constant. How much weight would I gain from the Coke alone? 20 pounds. 25. We got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You are so good. If you like my job, <laughs> my position, it's 20 pounds. If you break that down, divide it by each month, that's four pounds a month. That's one pound a week. By making that change, you're still having, I'm not taking away your coat. I'm drastically reducing the size. Um, but that's independent of workout. Independent of me saying you can't have this, that, or the other. Independent of you following the cabbage soup diet. Whatever it is, it's that change alone. So, way to go. Okay, here's Philadelphia versus Paris. Percent higher retail portion size. Here's Philadelphia, I can only support stuff in there for y'all. 
um, and then Paris. Lasagna, ours is 19% bigger, so it's 119%. Our cola, I don't like this, but it's about yet half, again, the size of their colas. Our hot dogs, they probably don't eat a lot of hot dogs in Paris. They do, they do eat sausages. It's 63, yogurt has 82%, and our microwave burger is 240% bigger than theirs is. So it's expensive. They do, they do. So they may eat different meal times, they may eat different timing, and we will get into that. And here's, um, here's a question before, before I read this. This is um, in terms of school getting on board. This is Senator Dean Martin from Arizona. He said, we trust 16-year-olds to drive 4,000-pound vehicles on the highway, but not to eat a Snickers. They can join the Army and handle an M16, but they can't handle a packet of Skittles. So he's saying, so we're making all these rules because they say it's our fault that we make the portion sizes bigger. So yeah, that's true. I don't, I don't like it, but do we have to take it away and limit everything because um, we don't know what to do? And that is an educational decision. We need to educate better. So whatever marketing is going to do in advertising to get us to buy stuff, so it's um, two for the price of one, for a bigger size, for the price of a smaller size, is fine. Um, but we've got to trust that we're teaching ourselves and our kids to choose right. And that's exactly what we're going to look at, some tips to choose right. So, kind of risky comment to make in the, the Senate, but um, it does give you an idea of the resistance nationally. This is not going to go away because they don't think it needs to. They're making money off of it. They're making money off of it. So it's a bottom line for those of you who work in management or have spouses that do. It is a bottom line number. It's not going away. So. The magic of mealtime. I love mealtime. I love food. I love social events. I love talking. That's why I'm a dietitian, obviously. Um, so you want to talk to me? You can talk about food. It's cool. Um, the magic of mealtime. It's like Disneyland. This is like Disneyland. So um, which is why it's fun here. It's it's about family time. Um, it's a social connection. Whether you do it with friends and girls are great at this. Girls love meeting up for dinners. Guys, you have to have like a game to watch with the, the meal. Um, but girls get together all the time, go out to eat, whatnot. Um, family around the holidays, it's a family time. So food is associated with family. Um, so, but without the holidays, do we eat a lot of family meals together? Maybe not enough, because timing is very hard. Um, kids eating family meals less than three times per week. Family meal is sitting down together, whether it's out to eat or at home, sitting down together. There's lower intake of calcium rich foods, uh, fruits and vegetables, greater intake of sweetened uh, beverages, snacks, and fast food, have more family unrest, develop more patterns of disordered eating later in life, and report to have decreased communications with parents and siblings. So there's a connection between sitting down and eating family meals together that have a social aspect and a health benefit that I want y'all to definitely take away today. Family could include you and a spouse, you and a loved one, whatever. It uh, doesn't need to be um, family with 2.5 kids and two SUVs to fit this criteria. Um, it doesn't. So there's a magic of mealtime that we all understand about. Quick healthy eating tips. There, there are a million, which is why it took me six years of education to get through um, a, a full degree, two degrees, three degrees, in, in nutrition because there's a lot to know. So these are takeaway tips that I want you guys to remember. Um, we talked about a lot of stuff today. Um, Meal skipping um, is, is really tough. I, uh, I worked with adolescent eating disorders for the past three years with teenage girls. Um, weight loss mechanisms of teenagers is meal skipping. Um, however, most of uh, girls with, um, not all, definitely not all, but many, many girls with um, eating disorders end up in life overweight because um, there's some metabolic stuff that happens internally um, that your body kind of can catch up with you, does not always but can. So skipping meals um, is definitely not re recommended. I actually recommend eating five or six small meals a day. Um, so your body, just like what we talked about, when you get down here, you're shooting up, you get down here, what are you most likely to do when your body's down at this low end? I, I'm in the cabinets. I have to have somebody pull me out of the cabinets, and I'm a dietitian. 
So the body will always win if you get to that point. If you don't get to that point, you don't have to have these crazy behavioral interventions where you're putting, um, where you're putting a lock on the doors. So um, giving yourself some time, sure, come on, um, to eat a little bit covers you. So before you get down here, having another snack, having another snack. You may feel like, I had a client that said, I feel like I'm grazing. Well, this is a lady who has lost two pounds every week that we have met together. She said, I've never eaten so much in my life. Well, we're getting the right things. Uh, plan ahead. If you're at work, if you've got a long commute, if you've got um, a business meeting for three hours that you can't get out of, plan ahead. Have something with you. Have a, have a good snack with you because um, the minute of the most food consumption in the U.S. is 4.18 p.m. What happens at 418? Everyone's ready to get out of the office. I've tried to hold off for dinner because my mom, my wife, my girlfriend's gonna be mad if I eat something. I'm not hungry for dinner. Um, then you're starving. Holiday time is there, the cookies are out on the table. I'm gonna eat a whole lot. So plan ahead, have something planned. Um, eat well-balanced meals and snacks. Um, what is well-balanced? That is another seminar. Um, <laughs> Eat slowly, eat fast. Your body takes about 20 minutes to recognize um, complete fullness. And even then, depending on the foods they eat, glycemic index of foods, fiber content, hydration, things like that, it may actually take 45 minutes to feel when you're hungry. But 20 minutes, your body doesn't recognize the appropriate receptors at the top of your stomach, don't send messages up to your brain, and you don't get a, a vagal nerve, which is a cranial nerve. You don't get the response until 20 minutes later. So um, eat slowly. Portion control. Y'all hit on that. Uh, fill up on fiber. We'll talk about the benefit of fiber uh, a little bit later. What does fiber do? Slows down digestion. Fills you up. Slows down digestion. Slows down digestion. Scrubs down intestines. Yes. Yes. Yeah, scrubs them out. Washes them. Absorbs fat. Gets out toxins. Promotes healthy digestion. What else? You guys are good. I'm not gonna have a job. <laughs> um, one of the things it does in the stomach, it does a lot for digestion. But I want to know what does it do for me while I'm eating, and how it controls how I eat. It bulks up. It's bulky. It's bulky. It bulks up in your stomach, so those proprioceptors at the top say, "Oh, get full." Kind of done with you. Yeah, the hardest thing I find is with kids and teenagers, um, teenagers, one won't dare touch anything in a package on The other one thinks that she's got to have a snack, it's got to be in a package. And, uh, you know, I try to get her to hit the fruit bowl first. But can you give any examples of things, high fiber that don't seem so uh, good as mom said, hit the fruit bowl? Yep. Um, fruit is um, the grainy texture around fruit. It, like pears and apples and oranges is fiber. Vegetables are high fiber. Kids don't necessarily like those. Um, cereals are adding fiber now. They add a lot of different things. There's a lot of fortified cereals. Um, even tricks. They add fi they add some fiber to tricks. Um, some little uh, granola bar like Nature Valley bars. Look for high fiber stuff. Anything with three grams of fiber or more per serving. Is it good? Um, per serving. Is, is a moderately high fiber food. So this, um, I'm interested to see what this, um, these labels are right here. Um, this one says um, one bagel is one gram of fiber. So I think I could go in and find something else um, that may be whole wheat or something that may have more fiber. In, okay, yeah. That's great, that's great. And that will, by science, biochemically, will make you feel fuller. So this is not a starvation diet. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not just saying, just don't go to the cabin when you're feeling hungry. Just, just drink water instead. Yes, yes, which is true. How many times have we been told that? And if it worked, we wouldn't be on this top 25 list, um, and nobody would be overweight. And once again, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> um, stay hydrated. Drink water or zero calorie beverages. One mechanism for weight loss is stay hydrated. I usually use an idea of half of your body weight in ounces. So if I'm 200 pounds, I should drink about, about 100 ounces of water. Um, does coffee count? No. Yeah. Does Coke count? Does Diet Coke count? No. 
this tea count? No. There's actually something came out in 2006 that they are now saying that those items do count now. They do count. Isn't that crazy? Um, so <laughs> that I know, I know. I don't know how I feel about that, but they did come out with a blanketed statement that say they do count that um, the caffeine and diet coke does not necessarily. Who um, think that? That is. I know. Yeah, Coca Cola owns us right now. Um, but but anyway, and good luck doing 100 ounces of coffee. I don't want to be around you if that is your 100 ounces. Um, milk. Another aspect of milk. Do you remember in the beginning when we talked about milk was going down? And I'm kind of equating it with that. Um, the Dietary Committee put the Dietary Guidelines for Americans together and recommended how many glasses or dairy products a day? Three. Who said three? Yay! Families! Yes. Yep. Um, they, they are. There's a lot of lawsuit, a lot of legality issues. Um, calcium, have you guys seen on the back of yogurt it says calcium burns fat? Have you guys seen that? It talks about dairy burns fat. Why would they say fat instead of lose weight? Right? Okay, so it's a general kind of weight loss thing. What else? Why would they put fat weight? Or fat? Catches people's eye more. Catches people's eye more. Um, it's actually science, too. It is, um, um, okay, calcium is uh, a precursor that your body looks for to see if I'm going to lose weight. Um, why? I don't know. I would rather have it look at my BMI or percent body fat to say you're nursed or not. It doesn't. It goes back to when we were in feast and famine time, um, when breastfeeding mothers were malnourished, they produced less calcium. Babies would get less calcium. So when babies had less calcium, their bodies naturally held onto their fat so they wouldn't waste away. Our bodies do the same thing. It could look for magnesium. It could look for vitamin C. It could look for my body fat to say, get rid of your excess fat, you don't need this. It looks to calcium because that way back in famine time, was an indicator that the baby's body would say, you don't need to hold on to this, this body fat because you're not in starvation. It looks to calcium. So increased outside calcium, external calcium, does not make your body reproduce it and get it from your muscles, which is what Jason works very hard to get your muscles going and getting all that stuff going so you don't need to use your muscle stores for that. But calcium will do that. If it digs into your muscles for calcium, your body says, you must be malnourished. I'm not going to get rid of that fat so you don't burn fat as easily. That combined with training in your anaerobic threshold will get you to some goals. Well-balanced snacks in our last minute. Um, this is some general ideas. Um, there's so much to, to it, yeah. On your road. I had a question about the calcium. Okay. Calcium supplements, they do the same thing as a particular type of calcium? Not necessarily. about six different kinds. Okay, calcium carbonate is more effective and more bioavailable. Dairy calcium binds with phosphorus, and so it absorbs a little bit more readily. Um, so dairy calcium, there's a, a special thing about dairy calcium, and I have no conflict of interest that I don't have any stock in any of these areas. <laughs> um, I promise. Um, but I do like research, and I'm analytical when it comes to research. Um, so dairy calcium does bind a little bit better in our body, accepts that more. Um, if you're not a calcium person, in, from dairy, you can get it from broccoli. You can get it from a lot of different fortified foods. Does that mean those don't work? No, because they do. It's more bioavailable if I get it from dairy, but your second line of defense is getting it from fortified other foods. Your third is, is supplements. Calcium carbonate, ca calcium uh, phosphate doesn't, doesn't bind as well. Um, so like Tom's tablets have, um, are, are pretty good. And we, um, um, uh, there's a supplement called OzCal. That's another good one. Well, like skim milk, for instance, then you get the calcium from that that you need without getting the extra calories or Yeah, that. yeah, absolutely, low-fat dairy. Yep. yep. Um, okay, carbohydrates, protein, fat, get some combined meals, add some things together. Um, peanut butter and banana, Jason, you had that today. <laughs> I did. Which is why Jason's so lean and healthy fit and active. Um, that's all you need. That's all you need. 
Okay, um, meals and, and snacks get a variety of different things because there's different nutrients that can kind of carry you through. Um, portion control, be aware, we, we've talked about this. Here's my method. Um, you got your fruits and veggies here. I call this my side. We'll call this your side. You get to do whatever you want with your side of the plate, but this, I own this side for all of you. I own, this is my side. Fruits and vegetables. You can have whatever starch you want on there. Unless I'm seeing one of you individually and then we make our own plan. Um, starch is up to you. You do it based on what we talked about with potatoes, things like that. Your, your cooked meat, whatever. Even if you have a steak, I'm not touching that side of the plate. I already told you I'm touching this side of the plate. Oh, I put it in the wrong plate. Um, vegetables. So that, that's where a lot of it comes in. What do vegetables have in it that will help with weight loss? Fiber. Whole grains, um, brown, whole wheat things, um, fruits, vegetables, legumes, which also are protein in there. Um, benefits of fiber, already talked about that. Helps fill you up, keeps blood sugar steady, um, healthy digestion, lower cholesterol. Fiber's a good thing. Can I ask you a question on the plate thing? Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I have a 16 year old daughter. More now, she's not wanting to eat. Sizes, look for sauteed. Um, 
grilled, things like that. Boy, did you guys see this? Burrito or body pillow? Yeah, they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> How many calories? Do you know how many calories are in those? Probably 2,000. Oh, they're huge. Cool. It's, I actually did research on it this last week because I read the article for the next day magazine. And just with the burrito bowl, I think it was 1,100 calories, and then the tortilla was another three or 400 calories. So you're getting closer to 1,500 calories for a burrito. Wow. See, that's where portion control comes in. You just eat less than half of it. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, just have to eat it. Good. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's true. Yikes. Crazy information. Uh, MyPyramid.gov is uh, the dietetics website. If you guys, and we've got some handouts here um, that we can um, pass out. Um, there you go. And if you need to write these on here. Um, ACSM, um, and Jason has, do you have some more, uh, like, off the top of your head, you think of, like, NASA or anything like that? Right. Websites that are fitness, nutrition type stuff? Yeah, right. And ASM will have anything Okay, okay. Um, um, CDC, www.cdc.gov is great for, for the public health aspect. Um, my pyramid and, and, and eatright.org, this is my mothership right here, eatright.org, and that's the Dietetic Association nationally. You will have a million of links and references to get to in terms of nutrition facts, nutrition logs, things like that. Um, if you log me in, you may find me in there somewhere. Uh, but your health is up to you. This is, this is you guys. You're making the first step. So you're coming in here. You are spending an hour at, on a beautiful day, not to mention, on a Saturday during the holiday season. So that is wonderful that you guys are already in here making the first step towards kind of a healthy lifestyle. Coming in here, it's awesome. So you're already doing the first step. You're somewhat motivated if you sit and listen to me. Jason, Jason's fun to listen to. But if you sit and listen to me for an hour, you're definitely happy and motivated. So keep going for your fitness and nutrition goals. Let us help you. We have got unbelievable trainers here to help you out. And I'm the only dietitian on, on here on board, but um, I work with the trainers real well, and we, we get your goals, and um, we have success if we team up together because it's a balance, fitness-wise, nutrition. We'll get you in here, and you actually will start to hate us after the first two or three days. <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. Um, so here's our information, um, and I'm gonna stay after for probably about 10 minutes to answer some more questions. Um, but we'll be having some more seminars, so I'd love for you guys to bring people, bring family, because this is a family deal. So it's a